This is the unsolved disappearing of Melinda Boyd. The disappearing of Melinda still remains an unsolved mystery. Over a hundred years ago, oral history has been told by the elder. Is that Melinda Borden was an unlisted passenger above the Titanic. She was traveling as a personal caregiver and with an independent European contractor. Of course, we must listen to the elders. Just listening to the elders lets you take a journey through their minds. And it's like walking through a library because they have ancestors' knowledge because they have old untold stories. This is Black Cock Titanic. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. This is Black Titanic. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. First of all, let me give a shout out to Jacobus Wolf. Um, I found him on Facebook. This young man do terrific artwork, you guys. Y'all need to check him out. Jacobus Wolf. He also did the cover of my book, Black Titanic. But what we're looking at today, hello, everybody. What we're looking at today is Brandy. Brandy and Whitney Houston. This is actually the last video uh, of Whitney Houston where she was seen interrupting an interview with Clyde Davis with E! Exclusive. Yeah, she walked up and hand Brandy the note. But she and Brandy was cast in the lead role of Cinderella together in 1997. Do y'all remember that? Brandy was already a rising superstar. She was on Theo and, and, a, and, and a Moesha. She also was a great singer. So she was handpicked by Whitney Houston to star in the role of Cinderella in 1997. Brandy was only 18 years old, and this was an opportunity in a lifetime for this star to be starring with such a legend as Whitney Houston. She will go on and say, you will always be my fairy godmother, a fairy godmother, Brandy would say. But what was on that note? What was on that note? I do know that Brandy had said, you are soaking wet. We seen her wet, her hair was dripping wet. Her wig or whatever it is she had on her head was wet. She was wet, y'all. And she said, I just got out of the pool. I almost drowned. Many speculate that she was trying to give Brandy a hint that someone was trying to murder her that day. But why, why did Brandy not keep the note? Brandy gave the note to someone else. Do you feel like Brandy betrayed Whitney by giving someone else that note. Nobody knows what was on that note because Brandy has not released that whatever was said to her to the public. Also, what relationship did Ray J have with, with uh, Whitney Houston? The last days of Whitney Houston. Stay tuned. <laughs> So, Brandy has the note, you guys. What is actually on the note? I think they tried to get rid of Whitney and failed that day. This is Skippy, y'all. The note was to basically ask Brandy for help because Whitney knew her time was up. That's probably why Brandy looked so uncomfortable. This wasn't a surprise. They tried again on that Saturday and were successful. Clyde David wasn't going to allow his party to be ruined, so he demanded Whitney's body be left in her hotel room while his party was going on downstairs. That's some sick stuff. Nobody sees anything wrong. 
weird about this? And then her daughter ends up dying in similar fashion. Shaka Khan said it best. The music industry is demonic. This is by e Eclusive was interviewing um was interviewing um Clive and Brandy and Monica when Whitney interrupted the show. Yeah. Who killed Whitney? Was it murder or was it suicide? Or did she accidentally drown? Yeah. Suspicious, suspicious, suspicious. So this is a Destiny relaunch, everybody. And she now realized that her relaunch is just a failure. Listen. So she says they just need to go. Now, I just like to say this to her, that you invited those people. You invited Wanda and you knew that the whole internet had a petition out for this woman. And you invited this woman to your relaunch, knowing that wherever she go, it's going to be drama. Now, that's not excusing Bill. That's not excusing nobody. Everybody need to be held accountable. But Destiny, I'm holding this on you this time because you know what type of a company you hang with with Wanda. You know. So you, now you got Mel has got to her breaking point, you guys. This woman been talking about her kids for months. It got so bad to, at this point, we had a petition out for Wanda, all the drama. But however, y'all know how the mainstream media always looking at black women in a negative eye, a negative stereotype, you know, and this is what right now is going on. These three women's right here and these three men's in the back of uh, of these women's are all playing into the negative stereotype of what black people do. Like this is how we act. The stereotype of us being ignorant and always like to clown and fight. This is what's going on. But however, wonder. It's the main problem, Destiny. And you and Melody is going through a custody battle. I will hope that the two of you could come together and lean on each other. But you got all this bitterness in your heart for Melody, Destiny. 
And I'm not excusing Melody, no. I'm not excusing because she. I think all of them out there should have been held accountable. But guess what? Now, let's go back to the guys. The guys in the back are discussing the baby, sugar mama. Martel is trying to tell Marceau that, you know, one that has no business talking about his child, period. So Marceau, being who he is, is trying to spin it, spin the narrative and say that she was talking about Melody and she was not talking about his, his child. But his own brother had to just say, hey, look, yeah, yes, yeah, she did. She was talking about the baby, too. Let's just listen, because one, they're going to double down. B, I promise you, not the, that's not that's not the image we even want for you, Wanda. No, we don't have nobody like that. Anyway, y'all tell them to come down the road. Melody, Melody, come on. Let's go to the floor. 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 You put your hands in my face, and I'm ready to stand on you, because I ain't starting at you. I ain't saying nothing to you. I said what I said on my social media, and I meant what I said. So y'all heard it out your own mouth. Go find your baby daddy. So of course, she's talking about the baby too. You talk about the baby also. Little sugar mama don't know who her daddy is. But anyway, so let's look at these three men in the back. Martel goes to uh, the hoax and, and he asking them, I mean, the Scott, and asking them for a job. Y'all know that's not going to work because Scopes is on the fire right now, as y'all know, with Zen Gardens and Eva Bank. They have been sued for over $8 million with this company. But these three men right here, they have a, a very unusual relationship. They seem like they can fight each other. They can argue. They can fall out even financially. But they always seem to mend their relationship together. But the problem is with this is the stereotype. This stereotype that Carlos is positioning this show of black families, black mothers, our daughters, black fathers, black brothers, black son. He's playing into all the stereotypes. That's what he's doing with this show. So I didn't get into the fight that much because it just reminds me of being in elementary school. Y'all know I did in the school at the last day of school when everybody gonna fight. You're out there in the parking lot waiting for a fight. These are grown people acting like little children in the schoolyard, y'all. Shame, shame, shame. This show is going down to the dirt. And then Destiny, yeah. No wonder you crying because this is the week that you supposed to have been had a successful relaunch and everybody, the whole world looking at this fight outside your your relaunch of Madonna. You walking with the losers. That's who you walking with destiny. These people ain't gonna do nothing but bring you down as you see. Birds of the feather flock together. You knew, you knew, Destiny, that we had a petition out about this woman and her violent episode with her with, and the threats that was coming from this woman and all her, her hillbilly relatives out of Bessemer, Alabama. You knew that you were in the middle of all of that and you invited. You invited this mess to your relaunch. Ain't no way in the hell I would invite this woman to nothing I have. Nothing. That's why I say that you are ultimately responsible for what happened 
in your store and outside your store. It's the people, destiny that you surrounding yourself with. You seen all over the internet with one Miss Miss Wanda. So if you gonna keep on flocking with her, you gonna keep on hanging out with her. This is what you're gonna get: drama and violence, because that's her behavior and that's her nature. Love and marriage, Huntsville has gone down to the dirt. I even hear Tisha say, there's some love and hip hop stuff. So let's see what the fans are saying. Good morning, BT Queen and everyone. In my opinion, Destiny has to put on a hard exterior because she is broken. She is always defensive and has this I'll get you before you get me attitude. Wow, she doesn't know how to channel that broken traumatic energy without being offensive. She was looking for a come up, but all means necessary and did not care about the people she hurt in the process because all she knows is hurt. I hope she sees the karma that she is experienced. Now, this is real. I wish nothing but but happiness and success for everyone involved. Having a bag isn't everything. A peace of mind is everything. Peace of mind. Yeah. And she said it right. There's nothing no more important than a peace of mind. Karma is hitting you, destiny. Karma. Karma hitting you, destiny.